This is an excerpt from a conversation with Emil Jacobs, Yuan Lee, and Nathan Lewis, moderated by Andrew Revkin, brought to you by the Chemical Heritage Foundation's annual TT Chow Symposium. I can agree that yeah. we do need to spend money in the research. <laughs> Otherwise, we don't have future. But on the other hand, <clears throat> I was talking about we should not uh, put up our hope so much on the science and technology fix. I think we look at our society and see how much waste energy we are wasting and how can we transform into a more um, idealistic society. And that's something we really need to do. For example, if anybody drive a car in one week who burn one tank of gasoline, he or she should realize that they, from the tailpipe, they are producing 100 kilograms of carbon dioxide. Not too many people believe in me, but when you burn one tank of gasoline, you are producing 100 kilograms of carbon dioxide all shooting out from the tailpipe. And the amount was really horrible uh, compared to what we are breathing. And Automobile producing is very not comparable. So, how can we reduce the amount of usage of energy to make a good living? And this is very important. The reason I'm saying that is every country in Asia, in Africa, try to learn from America. In US, enjoy high consumption and always projecting energy consumption will go up, technology will fix it. But yeah. we have to solve the problem globally, otherwise there's no global solution. So one thing is when we talk about, for, for example, sun is up and rise and fall in a day. But 100 years ago, when Great Britain colonized the entire world, they always said, we are the country sun never set, right? And when the British if we look at the entire world, as a scientist, then you see, sun never said. So as we learn to hook it up by DC high transmission line, right. so somebody really need to look at from the global perspective. And if we have a high voltage DC transmission line connected and send energy down. There's a question on that a little later. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, then we'll, we'll, see. we'll see, yeah. Can, can I build on that? Because yep. I think that's a very good point. If you look, If you look at the global energy demand today, and you split it into two parts, the developed countries of the world and the developing countries of the world. And you look at the total energy demand. For the developed countries of the world, that is essentially flat. In right. fact, it's starting to decline if you go from year 2000 out to 2030. And you're sitting there going, gee, that doesn't make much sense to me. I mean, the, the GDP is growing. How could this be? Well, the reason is it's energy efficiency and how effectively do, do the developed countries of the world use energy in doing everything that they do, transportation, converting it into GDP and products. With technology, the energy consumption is going down, GDP is going up. If you look at the developing countries of the world, from this point out 25, 30 years, essentially all of the energy demand growth is in the developing yeah. countries of the world. And you say, gee, how could that be? Well, it's, it's people raising their standard of living. It's people who don't have electricity in their homes getting electricity. It's people who don't have cars getting cars. But if the developing countries of the world follow the United States or the European model, then we know exactly what that's going to look like. So the question is, is there a way to kind of skip over some inefficient steps that the developed countries of the world took the last 50 years to do and jump to the next form of energy? Jump to, instead of running wires for telephones, everybody's got a cell phone. So how can you take advantage of what the developed countries have learned over the last 50 years and apply that in the developing countries of the world such that this huge ramp up in energy consumption doesn't occur and it's more 
a lower slope or a, a lower intensity of energy per GDP. And I think that's the challenge that, yeah. that lies ahead of us. I agree. 